Log reviews are another type of assessment, another type of test. Log files are lists of system events. Strong identification and authorization provides accountability. So if you know and you're carefully ensuring that every user has a unique ID and every user has their own authentication profile, you can then use log files to hold those users accountable. Because if you're not sharing user IDs, then a user ID is associated with every action and you can say, look, Fred, you actually did this. There's many types of log files. There's lots and lots of data to review. And many of these files are extremely large. The drawback with log files, however, is that every piece of information, every event, is placed in the log file historically. In other words, it's always something that happened in the past. It can be very near real time. It could have happened in the very recent past, but it's still historical. But that's not always a bad thing. It's there for however long you retain the log files, and it gives you the ability to trace back and to determine accountability of past actions. As you continually accumulate and manage log files, there are needs that include management and review. Management involves capturing log events, storing them securely, and then archiving or purging them. And perhaps you roll the log file. So you keep a log file when it's full or you decide to roll it. You copy it to the most recent version and then start over with a new log file. When that one's full, then you roll it again. And eventually you're going to delete the old log files. But you may have several older copies on disk until you actually purge them. And before you purge them, you probably want to archive them to some secondary storage. The other log file need for ongoing attention is review. Since there are so many log files with such a large amount of information, it's difficult to manually review all log files. It's necessary to use automated tools with certain patterns that have been set up to recognize anomaly behavior or unusual behavior. One of the issues that you'll have to deal with is time sequencing across servers. When you're tracing the actions of an attacker or just an event or a chain of events that occurred in your system, it's likely that the presence of a process or a user jump from machine to machine. The reason for that may be, let's say, with a web application. The user connected to your web server. The web server established a connection to the app server. The app server then established a connection with the database server. Well, those are three different server machines. They may be in different data centers or they may be in the same place, but invariably their clocks are going to be slightly offset. They may be very, very close, but they may be wildly different. So you have to be careful of synchronizing clocks with real time so that you can create a sequence of events throughout your system.